The two men who killed Fusilier Rigby were under investigation at various times by MI5. Between them, they appeared in seven different agency investigations. We have determined that there were errors in these operations and serious and unacceptable delays in the process of application for intrusive surveillance. However, we do not consider that these errors taken individually were significant enough to have actually made a difference to the eventual outcome. And we go into that in our report. We have also considered whether there was a cumulative effect, whether taken together these various errors might have affected the outcome. We have concluded that given what the agencies knew at the time, they were not in a position to prevent the murder of Fusilier Rigby. And again, we go in very extensive detail in the report that you now have copies of. We have also examined whether the agencies should have known more at the time, whether they should have taken more intrusive action. So far as Michael Adubalajo is concerned, he had been a high priority for MI5. At one point, he was included in their highest priority operation. MI5 threw everything at the investigations, but these investigations did not reveal at any time any evidence of attack planning. Michael Adubawali has been a lower level subject of interest. Although the agency's interest in him was ramping up before the attack, MI5 did not have any intelligence he was planning an attack. Based on that evidence, more intrusive action would not have been justified. That Adubalajo and Adubawali had extremist views was not in doubt. The intrusive surveillance did not, however, reveal any evidence that they were planning an attack. There was, however, one event which we have learned of, which in our view could have been decisive if it had been known to MI5 before Fusilier Rigby's murder. And this was an online exchange from December 2012 between Michael Adubawale and an extremist overseas. In that exchange, Adubawale clearly expressed his intent to murder a soldier. This exchange only came to light after the attack. If MI5 had seen this exchange at the time, their investigation into Adubawale would have become a top priority. This might well have enabled them to prevent the attack. Given how significant this exchange was, we have examined whether the agencies could possibly have obtained this intelligence before the attack, had they had cause to do so. We consider that it is highly unlikely that the agencies could have discovered this on their own. However, it is quite clear that the one party which could have made a difference was the overseas-based internet company on whose system this exchange took place. However, this company does not appear to regard themselves as under any obligation to ensure that they identify terrorist threats or to notify the authorities when their systems appear to be used by terrorists. This is unacceptable. However unintentionally, they are providing a safe haven for terrorists. 